Hi everyone! So in this video I'm going to be solving the College Board AP Chemistry Free Response Question number 8 from the 1996 Chemistry Exam. So let's get started. Before answering any of the questions, we can see that we are provided with the three-step process of a reaction between NO and H2. Here is what is given. We have one fast step, one slow step, and another fast step. So here are the three steps to our mechanism. Part A asks us to write a balanced equation for the overall reaction. By looking at these provided steps, we can cross off substances that are on both sides of the equations. So we have N2O2, which appears at the end, and the beginning of an equation, and N2O that also appears at the end and the beginning of an equation. So with that said, we can cross off these two substances. That leaves us with two NO molecules, two H2 molecules, two water molecules, and one nitrogen molecule. So when we put that all together, it would be written like this, 2NO, plus 2H2 yields N2 and 2H2O. So that is our full balanced equation. Moving on to part B. Part B asks us to identify the intermediates of the reaction. Before we do that, let's define the word intermediate. An intermediate is a substance that is the product of one step and is then used as the reactant in the next step. So looking at the three steps provided, we can see that N2O2 and N2O are the intermediates of the reaction. See, N2O2 is at the end of step one and the beginning of step two. N2O is the end of step two and the beginning of step three. So N2O2 and N2O are our intermediates. Now, another way to triple check that these are our intermediates is looking back at the balanced equation we made in part A. As you can see, neither of these molecules are present in this equation, which proves that these are our two intermediates for this specific reaction. Okay, moving on to part C. In part C, it says, from the mechanism represented above, which are these three steps, a student correctly deduces that the rate law for the reaction is rate equals K times the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of H2 to the first. The student then concludes that one, the reaction is third order. The student then says, that the mechanism involves the simultaneous conclusion of two NO molecules and one H2 molecule. Are conclusions one and two correct? So let's start with conclusion one. Conclusion one is correct. We can tell because when we look at the exponents in our rate equation, we can see that NO is raised to the two and H2 is raised to the first. So 2 plus 1 equals 3. So that's where we get third order from. Now let's move on to conclusion 2. Conclusion 2 is incorrect, simply because two NO molecules and one H2 molecule are not present in any of these three processes. Step 1 has two NO molecules, but no H2. And steps 2 and 3 have H2, but no NO. So conclusion one is correct, and conclusion two is incorrect. Finally, we have part D. Part D asks us to explain why an increase in temperature would also increase rate constant K. So we have an increase in temperature, and we want to prove an increase in K. So first we have to note that temperature is directly proportional to kinetic energy. So that means as temperature increases, kinetic energy increases. So as kinetic energy increases, we can conclude that there would be more collisions in the container. 
more collisions automatically means an increase in rate constant K. So to go through that again, an increase in temperature would be an increase in kinetic energy as well because they are directly proportional. That increase in kinetic energy means more collisions in the container and more collisions thus means an increase in rate constant K. So that's the whole problem. I hope this video helped you solve the College Board AP Chemistry free response question number eight from the 1996 chemistry exam. Bye.